everybody, welcome to Calvin's Guy Game. Today I'm continuing on my series of games that I like that start with a certain letter of the alphabet and today we are on the letter P. I have nine games this week, uh, this time, so uh, before I get started there's a couple things I want to cover. One is my new intro with my little cartoon character and my little cartoon video there at the beginning was made for me by my son Ethan and I just want to say I thank him so much for making that it is a really cool deal and I really appreciate it secondly <clears throat> I want to say that if you have a local game store in your area please support your local game store guys they provide us a place to play games they sell games where we can get them right away um, and there's just a lot of things that that a local game store does for us they can order a game for you if they want it I know my local game store does, and I want to give them a shout out. That's Three Sons Unlimited. If you're ever around Longview, Texas, go take a look at them. Um, they have a great board game selection. They have a great library where you can check something out and play it for free before you buy if you if they have the game there. Um, Christine will be, you know, if she's not busy, um, she plays games with me on uh, certain nights of the week. Uh, Christine and Randall own the shop. Great people. Guys, if you have a local game store, go support it. Well, let's get started with last week's comments <clears throat> on O games. Well, Aaron Nunley and Ludwig Misses both said uh, Oni, uh, Oni Ohanami. That's what it is, Ohanami. I'm sitting here trying to pronounce it. It's Ohanami. It's a 2019 card game, closed drafting, pattern building, and set collection. So if Ohanami sounds like something that you might be interested, go check that out. It's not surprising. Uh, it looks like it's a good game because two people said that it was their favorite game. Also, Ludwig, Ludwig Misses had a solo game that he wanted to put out there. And since him and uh, Aaron matched on the other game, uh, the solo one is a 2010 game called Onirim. And Onirim is basically a single player game it says cooperative but it's mainly a single player game to where you are lost in your dreams nightmares whatever you want to call it and you're trying to find a way to get out and escape um, guys on i is very fun i play the app i don't own the um the version of the game uh the hard copy but i do play it on the app and hopefully uh ludwig uh, got a hold of that app all right <clears throat> got all that out of the way Let's get on with the games that start with the letter P that I find um, to be really, really uh, good. I'm going to take them off because I can't read with them on, but I can't see the camera with them off. So anyway, um, P games. The games that start with the letter P. I have nine of them. Here we go. My number nine is Professor Evil in the Citadel of Time. This game is... Professor Evil has, has stolen artifacts, artwork, uh, rare collectible things, and has stored them in his mansion. And you are trying to break in and steal those things back and deliver them back to the museums or wherever they came from. The trick is trying to disarm all the alarms. And there's all kinds of alarms and traps. There's two of each kind, so you have to disarm both before you can do... Uh, be able to do whatever it is that they unlock doors or they turn off cameras or whatever to steal those things back. And if Professor Evil catches you, you have to give everything back to him and then you have to move outside the house and find another way in. Guys, I really enjoy Professor Evil and the Citadel of Time. That's why it's my number nine. My number eight is Pan Am. Now this one you can find at Target and other places. Uh, it's kind of a mass market game, but Pan Am is, you're an airline, you remember the old Pan Am Airlines, or if you're too young, I apologize, but most of people in my generation remember Pan Am. Uh, Pan Am was a, a big airline, and what happens is, is you're running a small airline, building your routes, and you're hoping that Pan Am is going to come buy you out. It's a great little game. Um, I don't think it reminds me of Ticket to Ride that much, but it has that route building aspect like Ticket to Ride. Um, but Pan Am was an interesting game. I liked it. Um, it's my number eight. Number seven. Number seven is Paperback. 
Paperback is a card game where you're trying to spell words and collect um, certain um, scoring uh, books or covers or whatever they're called. I can't remember. But you also get to buy cards with how many points you have. So you can either buy uh, a wild card book or you can score uh, the points you have to buy other cards to go in your deck. So it's a deck builder, but you're spelling cards. You have a common card that you can use. It may be a, an A, an O, a U, or an I. And so you're trying to spell words and you get points for, there's points on the cards and you get points for how long a word you spelled for however many points you got in it. And you can also acquire a card for if you spelled a seven letter word, you get to acquire the common letter and then the new one is revealed. This has a competitive and a cooperative cooperative mode. I prefer the cooperative mode. My wife and I play that. You have a pyramid of cards you're trying to get through that you have to buy. And if you don't buy one that turn, you have to put these cubes on it. And if any time one of those cards has five cubes on it, you lose the game. So it's, it's trying to get you to build bigger and better words and score more points to buy those cards because each one of them have a different value. Guys, I really enjoy paperback. Not a great speller. Um, word games are probably not my my favorite. I do not like Scrabble. But this game is absolutely fun. But I think if you do like Scrabble, this is the game for you. Try to find paperback if you can. Number six is Pathfinder, the adventure card game, Rise of the Rune Lords. I like this game. You have a villain you're going up against. Each person has a hero. They have their own deck of cards that you built. Um, and you're trying to defeat this villain. Uh, you're rolling dice, you're getting more cards into your deck at the end of the game, or you can earn cards as you go through the game because certain locations um, have uh, cards you can earn, but you have to roll the dice to see if you can earn it. There's a certain dice roll you have to make. <clears throat> really enjoy this game. I don't get it to the table as much as I want, but I do enjoy it. It's a very fun game. It's Pathfinder, the adventure card game, Rise of the Rune Lords. They have a bunch of them. But if you can find one that you like, I'm sure. Uh, they have a pirate theme one, I think. Uh, there's a couple of them out there. But go take a look at them. I think you'll enjoy it. Now, my number five is a board game. Uh, hello, this is all board games, but this one is a roll and move board game. It's called Park and Shop. The reason this one's on here at number five, this game brings a lot of memories back for me. I actually found a copy of it uh, and uh, I bought it. Um, my uncle uh, and my aunt, my parents used to go over to their house and they would get this game out and they would play it. I always wanted to play but they, you know, no, this is for adults only. You go do something else, right? So in this game, you have a pawn, you have a car, and you have a pawn, a, a person. So you have to drive your car from your house to a parking garage. Like That's what it's called, park. And then you get out and you shop. You have a list of things you have to do before you can get back to your car and get back to your house. Guys, this game is a lot of fun. Yes, it's a roll and move game. Yes, there's a little bit of luck to it, rolling numbers to move fast enough. But I think the game has enough there um, that it's just fun each time. When you get back to your car, you have to pick up one final uh, errand you have to run. And so it may be, oh, I have to go to the car wash. I have to go to the auto dealership. And other things make you add things to your list as you go um it's just the ever it's it, the deal of the game is get all your stuff first get back to your car get back home the only thing is you got to have the exact role to get to your house so if you miss your house you're gonna have to circle the block and come back around guys it's a lot of fun especially when everybody's trying to get back to the house at the same time parking shop just has a lot of memories for me uh, that's why it's on my list at number five Number four is Pina Pirata. Pina Pirata is a card shedding game, kind of like Uno um, and, and other games like that. But it's a, it, it has rules. Um, you have three or two rules out in the middle and they grow. You can get up to four. And once you get four, when you have to do a new rule, you can take an old rule out and put a new rule in. 
But these cards have parrots, crocodiles, uh, baboons, um, what is the other animals? Turtles, um, all penguins, all kinds of things on the cards. And what you're trying to do is if somebody plays a card, you have to play a card out of your hand. Well, the cards you play may have a rule out there associated with that card that says uh, if you play a parrot, you can give a card to the player to your left. I find this fantastic. This game is great. And how you win the game is you collect those tiles on the back side. It's got like a treasure map, but one corner is marked with a red line. And so when you match up all four tiles with that red line going towards each other, it makes an X, like X marks the spot on the map. And that means you win the game. So guys, this game is fun. I enjoy it. It's a simple game. I can play it with my family. I can play it with others and teach it in minutes because it's that easy. The only thing is uh, a little hard for some folks is remembering all the rules because you got four rules going at one time. Uh, the basic rule is just follow suit, but then you have other rules that have certain animals. Uh, if it's a certain animal, they do certain things. So, Pina Pirata, fantastic. That was my number four. Number three. It would probably surprise folks it's number three, and I kind of cheated on this list, but we'll talk about that in a second. My number three is Pandemic. Pandemic is a blast of a game. You can teach it. Everybody can understand it. Um, it's just a game that you're trying to wipe out these, these diseases off the board, trying to cure them, trying to um, make sure there's no outbreaks. There's many conditions to lose. This game is a cooperative game. Many conditions to lose, only one condition to win, and that's to cure, not necessarily uh, eradicate, but cure each disease. Fantastic game. I love it. I, I uh, don't play it near enough like I used to. It kind of sits on the shelf a little bit. But whenever I can get it out, I get it out. And that was my number three, Pandemic. Well, my number two, like I said, I kind of cheated a little bit. I put Pandemic Legacy as number two. And the reason I did that is because I do think there's enough difference in the games because of Pandemic Legacy, you are actually going through a story and a scenario, opening things as you go, depending on what happens. And in Pandemic Legacy, you can only play the game 24 times. Uh, you can play each month twice. So if you fail a month, it'll it's going to tell you to open something and then you get to play the month over it. If you fail it again, you just move on. So the game, it was just so, um, it's just so good in how it progresses in the, in the experience that you have going through it. That's why Pandemic Legacy, and I separated them out, but Pandemic Legacy is my number two. My number one, I, uh, I really like this game. Um, I think that... Um, I learned this game just not too long ago, but it really set with me, and it's called Paleo. Paleo is a fantastic game. It's you're a tribe of cavemen and cave women trying to gather food, build tools, uh, survive feeding everybody, and trying to not lose your tribe's people. Uh, this game is not easy, um, but the good thing about it is it's a cooperative game. So if each person has their own deck, you turn up a card or you choose a card. You have three cards you can choose from. You only look at the backs of the cards. You don't look at the front until you choose the card. Everybody puts it down face down. When everybody's done picking their card, they all turn them up. So I may not be able to hunt this mammoth that I have because I don't have enough uh, weaponry, right? So the person across from me goes, well, yours will get me more, yours will get us all more food, so why don't I help you? So instead of him doing his mission, he's just going to discard his mission and help me with the tools or the weapons that he has or she has that can help me. So that's where the game really shines, is deciding on should I do my own card or should I help someone else. And uh, 
when you when you do a card, sometimes it tells you to just trash the card. That means it's out of the game. It goes to the to the graveyard pile, right? So, depending on when to do a card, when not to do a card, is pretty um, pretty challenging. Of do I get this food now or do I wait till later uh, when we when we actually need it? Because I think in one of the expansions, the food spoils. So luckily in the base game that doesn't happen. You can build food up, but that does happen in the expansion. Guys, I really enjoy Paleo. You get to craft tools. You get to. It's just a a fun cooperative game, and I think that it helps with that alpha gamer. There's not so much of a, oh you do this, you do that, because you don't know until the cards flipped. So it kind of helps that situation. Now you still get into, well, you should help this person. Well, if you don't want to, you can do your own card and not help them. It's up to you as your individual uh, tribe, as your group of cave people, right? You get to decide what's best for yours. So I enjoy Paleo. It's a great game. If you haven't ever played it, go check it out. Uh, I think you might enjoy it if you like cooperative games that are a little difficult and uh, you get to craft things and other things like that. So Paleo was my number one. Hey guys, I want to hear what is your favorite P game, game that starts with a P. Um, I want to hear what it is. I want to know in the comments, and I'll guarantee I'll mention them on the next video. Guys, I want to thank you for subscribing. I still have a lot of people watching the videos that aren't subscribed, so guys, hit that subscribe button. It doesn't, it's hit it and forget it. Isn't that what they say? Just hit it and forget that you hit it. Because I really appreciate the support of looking at my channel, watching my videos, clicking that like button sure helps as well. Hit that bell for notifications when I have more coming out. I'm going to start a video series after I get done with these uh, alphabet games about uh, games I called from uh, that I got out of my collection and no longer in my collection. Um, that and I'm going to tell you why they're not in my collection. Guys, thank you for watching, and as I always say. Get a board game to the table, spend time with your friends and your family, and thank you for watching Calvin's Guide Game.